Hi, I'm Derek Hilton, and my channel is all about photographing and filming wildlife. Now, what have I got in store for you today? Let's take a look. Hi, and welcome to my office. It's springtime, so there's lots of action with birds nesting at the minute. Got spotted partilopes in the background there. No, they stopped now, haven't they? They're uh, cleaning out the burrow that they had last year in the bank of the creek there. I've got king parrots up there checking out a hollow tree. So they might nest up there. In this particular spot that I'm in is where I photograph and film the agile antichinus, the little carnivorous marsupial, the females. Last year I had four here, so I've come back just after breeding season, August is their breeding season, it's just finished and I've been waiting for them to turn up again, so hopefully they do. But in the meantime, while I've been waiting for them to turn up, I've been getting two pairs of white-browed scrub wrens fighting over territory. 40 metres away in that direction, there's one pair have built a nest already. And three metres away, down the bank, just down there, another pair have built a nest. So they're coming, smelling the food that I've put out, which is um, oats soaked in honey to draw out the agile. They love that stuff. Also to the birds, I've been getting those two pairs coming out individually and occasionally they see each other and then there's a bit of a blue one. So I've been getting lots of practice in with my new flash that's been out for about four months now I think. That's the 600EX second version. And I'm loving the continuous shooting. That's why I bought it for. So I've been getting lots of practice with these scrub rings. Trying to get them with their wings out. Timing is crucial. 7D Mark II, the focus is pretty quick, it doesn't get distracted too much with the background or whatever. It's me that's got to get it right because they move real quick. It, it's um, a challenge, but they're giving me lots of practice. So here's a few of the photos. So not bad, they're pretty good, but they're not spectacular. I'm still waiting for that spectacular shot. They give me the opportunity. The flashes give me the opportunity. And with the Agile, what I'm after with them is when they come out, they bound like a possum. So I want to catch them in midair. I've got a couple of good shots like of that, but I want that spectacular one as w of them as well. That one in a million shot. Hopefully with this flash, I'll be able to achieve that if I can get it right. Now with continuous shooting, we can't use full power. You have to drop it down quite a bit. Uh, one fourth will give me four photographs, four continuous shots before it goes blank. It has to recharge, but it's really quick to recharge. So it's just a couple of seconds I have to wait before I fire. So it's just a matter of timing it. Didn't get anything then. <laughs> I tried my best, but it's very hard to time it. And that was a female fairy wren, very flighty. I didn't let her have a chance to settle down, but uh, next time I'll be a bit more gentle. Maybe I'll get a better result. It's starting to get a little dark now. 7D Mark II can focus in pretty dimly lit environments, but there's a tip off point, and I'm getting a little closer to that now. So I'll just get the light out and get ready. And this is a, a 600 LED light, it takes two batteries. If you use one battery, you get every second light coming on, so you only get half the lights. Put both of them on, we get the whole lot together, and I can dim that down 
remotely so I don't have to disturb my subject as it turns up. I can conserve power by having it down low, so 50%, so I can watch out what's coming. Oh, and here's the little fairy wren again <laughs> coming. By the time I pick up my camera, it'll nick off, so we'll just let it go. So yeah, it's got really good uh, battery consumption life. I, I've had it up to almost five hours. Uh, male blue wren, uh, fair wren's coming in. So, I don't know, they've put me off now. So it's a great light anyway. Really good on the XF300. At three metres away, have it on full power, I get great exposure. Where my other little 360 LED light, I have to be up around two metres so that the XF works really well. Has a very cold Kelvin temperature reading, where this is a, a lot warmer. It's um, more of a, almost a daytime type Kelvin temperature. It's really good in that respect. Has diffusers. I keep that on. Works really well here on two and a half meters away from my subject. So it's a great light to be able to help out with focusing as we go into that um, more dimly lit sort of environment as the sun's dropping right down and I can continue right through the night photographing or filming it's just an awesome light to have didn't cost all that much splash all the details up here uh, great portable light the only thing that I could pick on is the fan kicks in every now and then and I have to have my microphone off the camera, which I do anyway when I'm filming wildlife. I like to have it up close. I have to have it a lot further away than I would normally have. It's not really loud, but I can still pick it up if it's a metre and a half away, so I need to be two metres away, so I'll shove it right over there in the corner. Now, I photograph and film right through the year. I don't stop. So I've made a shelter and I've talked about it a little bit, so we'll go and have a look at that. And I've also made a platform on the other side of the forest so that I can film the Agile Antichinus building a nest. So we'll go and have a look at that right now. built myself out of scraps from home a portable platform that I can shift around the reserve as I need it. And the reason why I have it here for is there's a tree here that's hollow and for the last three years I've had a female agile antichinus build a nest and bringing up her young. And last year I was lucky enough to be able to film her bring up her young from start to finish but what I didn't get was her actually building the nest. What I've done is I've screwed on this branch here and attached my fauna camera to it so that it's here 24 7 filming her when she does turn up hopefully she's alive and she does come back this year and I get that great footage of her actually building the nest. Because I've got a lot of questions to ask besides having that great footage. How long does it take her to build a nest? Does she doesn't do it in one night or does it take a couple of nights or does she actually build it through the day so I'd like those questions answered and the fauna camera will do that for me but just a quick easy setup grab some branches from out here that are laying on the floor bash them into the ground screw them in with my cordless drill and it makes it solid so that I don't get camera shake so that's going to do the job for me now. Let's jump up and have a look at uh, the hole here where she's going to build her nest. Hopefully it's within this week that she uh, actually builds her nest and I can be ready once it's built. I can start filming her again. There's a few reasons why I need the platform for. One being making myself really comfortable. Last year I had my camera on a pole 
filming this tree with me standing on a ladder with my calf muscles absolutely burning. Also, because the camera will be up nice and close to me, I can put my hand on it and not make much movement. So ready to go when she turns up, turn it on and off without making much hand movement. will make her less nervous being around me. Another biggie is being on the same level with my subject it means I can cut down the amount of sky in the background. It's going to be a problem with exposure. I want my subject to be exposed properly so I can get all the detail and everything. Because look, today it's overcast. You can see in the background there, it looks horrible. So the more I can cut out, the better I have my camera slightly on an angle down so that I get more of the ground. being able to continually photograph and film when the conditions get bad. So pouring down with rain, miserably cold and horrible conditions. I've made myself a lean-to, so just a tarp tied to a frame so branches that I found on the ground, so I'm not disturbing the environment by breaking off living branches. It's just ones that I found on the ground, making sure that every one of them has a V in it, so I can either sit branches into them so they lock in and then simply tie them with, normally I would use bark, but because I had to construct this in miserable wet conditions, it was pouring down, I used string quickly tie them together so that I can get it over and done with quickly. So each branch has those V's in it to lock in like these ones running across. So I have my posts with the V's on at each corner, back and front. Use this stick just to prop up the top a little bit more. Have the back leaning down lower so that the water runs off. Now I've got this stick across here. It's removable. I can pull it out the way when I want to get out. And what I use it for is to photograph my subjects that are in this area here, this tree. I can grab my camera, sit it on there. It takes the weight, takes the stress off my arms when I'm waiting for the right shot to happen because it could take quite a few minutes. I don't want to be holding the camera up like that. A tripod would just get in the way here and because I'm sitting on the ground on this tarp it's keeping my bum nice and warm from uh, the ground coldness and this water comes running through. I can stretch my legs out and I'm comfortable so this branch helps me out, takes the weight off, wait for my subject, get in the right spot, take a shot. A great little adaption Got to be inventive when we're out in the bush to get uh, comfortable and get great shots with our camera. Now, why am I filming here? What's of interest to me in this dead hollow tree? Well, for quite a few years, probably about six or seven years, I've been trying to find a communal den of the agile Antichinus, the carnivorous marsupial, that's gone beyond an obsession for me, it's taken over my life. I have to know it. it's every ins and outs, every bit of its behaviour. So lucky for me, this year, I've been very fortunate, I've found a nest of them here. They've given me some beautiful photographs, tons of footage and lots of learning. Now I've set up a stage over there, there's that branch that's coming across, got a nice other one so it can sit in to keep it up high so I can photograph my subjects at a nice level. Uh, yeah, I want their tails hanging down so I've got a nice thin branch so that happens. The other end's got a, another branch coming off it that I've dug into the ground so it's solid, it's really good. So I've had an absolute ball in reasonably comfortable conditions for me. Rain's not getting on me, not getting on my gear wrecking it, keeping on a frosty night 
and there's clear skies, which I've had a lot of lately. Stopping the moisture, settling on my camera, and getting in and destroying it. It's how I go about getting out of the weather, but being able to continually film, learn about my subject, get some great results. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Had a bit of a relook at the 600 EX second version and how I'm going with its continuous shooting. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Just about got it worked out properly now. Especially when you combine it with the 7D Mark II. It is a lot of fun. And these little birds are all giving me a lot of practice getting ready for the Agile Antichinus to turn up. And one of my subscribers asked me whether I was buying the extra power pack that you can buy for the 600. I don't think I need it, not at the minute. Yeah, I don't see the need for it, just... In positions like this, I'm getting what I need anyway. With the power pack you can virtually double the amount of photos you're going to get. The recycling time is enhanced even more, so it's a lot quicker. Not as much gap in between. Okay, so if you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you'd like to go and have a look at all the things I've been doing over the years, so there are 40 videos to choose from, there must be something there of interest for you. Now just remember to break the camera out. Lots of things happening around the place, in the forest and out in the open with birds nesting. So if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. See ya. So there's lots of action going on here. This spot here is where I've fat. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a pretty bad throat at the minute. I've had lots of antibiotics, but it just won't go away. Really sore and uh, dry, so my voice might drop a bit as I'm going along. Man, my throat is killing me. Get up, it's not funny. Uh, Alright, let's try it again. <laughs>